St. Peter's Chair at Rome. The Manifestation of the Divinity of Jesus, which characterizes the season after Epiphany, demands of us the recognition of his kingship over our souls. Christ is the head of the church, but as he is to reascend some day to heaven, he communicates his divine power to a man, for after the incarnation it is by human intermediaries that God wills normally to establish his dealings with us. The man whom Jesus constitutes prince of our souls, and on whom he builds his church, is St. Peter. As vicar of Christ, he will sit in the chair once occupied by Jesus, and will hold in his hands the keys as the symbol of supreme authority. We read in the epistle the beginning of the first letter of St. Peter. All the letters of the apostle bear the mark of his primacy. Rome is to be the capital of the kingdom of heaven upon earth. It is to Rome that Peter will come. It is on Rome's blessed soil that he will shed his blood. He will be bishop of Rome. Wherefore, we must see in this feast a liturgical testimony to the primacy of honor and jurisdiction attached to the chair of Rome. This material chair is still preserved in the apse of the Basilica of St. Peter. St. Paul, during his sojourn at Corinth in the year 58, wrote an epistle to the Romans. Towards the year 62, he was led to Rome a captive and remained there two years. Imprisoned again, in the year 67, he was put to death, like St. Peter, in the henceforth eternal city. Wherefore, the liturgy associates in the second collect the glorious name of the apostle with that of the first bishop of Rome. Let us today pray for the Pope, successor of St. Peter that he may freely exercise the divine powers communicated to him by Jesus, Son of God. St. Peter's Chair at Rome Christ our King, thy kingdom come.